Right, this is a reading from Matthew, chapter 21, verse 7 through to 11. So we're starting there. They bought the donkey and the colt, placed their coats on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the ground, whilst others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds went ahead of them, and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? And the crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. So you might wonder why people put cloaks on the ground and put their palm leaves from the trees onto the ground. And that was done in ancient times to indicate that an important person was coming, a king, a noble person, someone who was a ruler, a rightful ruler. And those were terms of respect. So if you put your cloak on the ground, you may only own that one cloak. That may be the only thing that you have in your possession to keep you warm, keep you safe. And so by putting that one treasured possession that we've done in other RE lessons on the floor is a huge sign of respect. It'd be like putting your best clothes on the floor for someone to walk across to make sure that they stayed clean. So you can see that by that action, the people were showing Jesus a huge level of respect, a huge level of expectation. Let's move on to the next reading. Now with this, we move to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, verses 13 to 25. The mood changes here. Jesus in the previous one had been given a huge amount of respect. The people were loving him. They were showing their respect by taking their cloaks off, putting it on the ground. They were shouting Hosanna, which meant hooray. Now let's see what happens in this gospel. And we're going to start just here. Pilate called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people. And he said to them, you bought me this man as one who was inciting the people to rebellion. I have examined him in your presence, and I have found no basis for your charges against him. Neither is Herod, for he sent him back to us. As you can see, he has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him and then release him. With one voice they cried out, Away with this man! Release Barabbas to us! Barabbas had been thrown into prison for an insurrection in the city and for murder. Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appealed to them again. But they kept shouting, crucify him, crucify him. For the third time he spoke to them, why? What crime has this man committed? I found him no grounds for the death penalty. Therefore, I will have him punished and then release him. But with the loud shouts, they incessantly demanded that he's crucified and that their shouts prevailed. So Pilate decided to grant their demand. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, the one they had asked for, and surrendered Jesus to their will. We now move on to verse 32 in the same chapter. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called Skull, there they crucified him along with the criminals. One on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, if he saved others, let him save himself, if he is Christ of God, the chosen one. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar, and they said, if you are the Jew, king of the Jews, save yourself. There was written a notice above him which read, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you're under the same sentence, we're punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man's done nothing wrong. And then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth, today you'll be with me in paradise. Now move on to Luke chapter 24, verses 1 to 12. 
On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright the women bowed down their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men. He must be crucified on the third day, be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told of these things to the eleven, and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words, it seemed to them, like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. So here we've heard two more parts of the story. The middle part, where Jesus is sentenced to be crucified and is then crucified, the story becomes very dark, very chilling, and it seems like nothing can save him. And then, afterwards, when everyone thought they had lost Jesus, he's risen again come away from the tomb, and just where they thought all their hopes had gone, Peter and the women, such as Joanna and Mary, suddenly were filled with hope again. So for this next part of the task, you're going to need a ruler, a pencil, and a sheet of paper. Now what you can see I've done with the sheet of paper here, or what, certainly what will be clear, is I've folded it into three. So I've got one part here, and then as I move along the sheet, I folded another part here. So I have three equal sections. And at the top, I've labeled it one, two, and three. Now, each three, or each of these three sections, will represent a different part of the story I've just gone through with you. And what I want you to do is just at the top, so leave yourself plenty of room at the bottom, but just at the top, list a few words about how Mary might be feeling. So as Jesus, her son, is entering Jerusalem and everyone is singing his praises and showing him respect and putting their cloaks on the ground, what feelings would a mother have of her son? He's being treated like a king, a ruler, someone, a liberator. Um, what will she be feeling at that point, knowing so much has been built up towards this? Then, in this second section, think about Jesus being sentenced with Pilate saying that he wanted to release him, but the crowds of people saying that they wanted him executed, crucified, and then seeing him on the cross. What huge range of emotions would Mary be feeling at that point? And just right then, just in that top section. And then finally, in the third section, when Jesus is risen again, have a think about how Mary is feeling at that point. She went to make sure her son's body was correctly cared for and pay him respects. But instead, she found her son's body was missing and she was being told that he is back from the dead. What might she be feeling at that point? List those range of words because they will change from when she's approaching the tomb and entering the tomb to after receives that message and goes and speaks to the others. So there's going to be a big range of emotions there, and that's going to change a lot. Now, at the bottom of the sheet, you're going to be drawing two lines. You can see I want one line just coming down here, and then the other line goes across all three sections. Now, let's go back to here. This is going to be an emotion graph. So we're going to be showing Mary's emotions and how they might change throughout the story. Now, what I want you to do here is to list three types of emotion. I've represented them using these emojis, but I want you to write down words that would represent these emotions. So here we've got one of sadness. Right at the bottom, 
might be words like despair. Uh, then we might creep up miserable. Then we might creep up have sad, then unhappy. In the middle, you're going to have emotions of being nervous, unsure, uncertain. So you might want to put sort of um, feeling unsure, uncertain, maybe feeling perhaps words that describe when you're in that in that middle state, sort of neither happy nor unhappy. Nervous. And then here we're going to start with happy, excited, ecstatic, jubilant. Words that increase ever increasing happiness. Words that mean you're getting happier and happier and happier. So the happiest is right at the top. Okay. And then when you've done that, have a look at the words that you've put at the top of each section. And start drawing a line with a ruler to show how you might be feeling. So when Jesus enters Jerusalem, it might start off, well, not too sure how things are going, not too sure what's going to happen today. And I suspect that you would then start drawing a line that goes up and 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 up to the most exciting one to show that he's entering Jerusalem. Things are going really, really well. Here, have a think about what happens when He's put on trial, put onto the cross. This is going to change. It might start up here and then there's going to be times when maybe it comes down, moves up and down through different parts of the story. When yeah, maybe there's hope when Pilate says, I want to release him. And then despair when people cry for him. And then hope as Pilate says, but he's done nothing wrong. And then despair when people cry out for his crucifixion leading ultimately to his crucifixion. So I suspect that at different times, you're going to decide with the words you've chosen that that could be quite a different emotional graph rather than the other one, which is really high. That one may rock it up and down, ending ultimately, I suspect, at the lowest point. Here, we're going to be at the lowest point. But I suspect that as you think about as she approached the tomb, then she was shock, maybe horror, it's stays quite low at seeing the tomb has been disturbed but then it might creep up to hope maybe it might go to confusion when the people are you know uncertainty right into the middle when people are say that he is risen and then hope again maybe jubilation maybe it goes all the way back up to the top maybe it stays into the middle maybe it goes up and down i'll let you decide that but ultimately what you should be able to do is to produce a graph, thinking about the words you've created, that show how our emotions would have gone up and down from highs to lows during different points over these three important days.